You can say the spin flip line reveals atomic gas, which fills the space and holds a lot of mass. New stars are born in clouds we can't directly see. We get around this by observing states of C. Warm bubbles of dense gas encase each massive star, but their ionizing light still makes it pretty far. The light from these young stars runs headlong into dust. To trace these grains, IR emission is a must. When massive stars explode, they blast the gas away and shock what's left to upwards of a million K. Last, while this disk of gas can let the system grow, it's still not much compared to the halo. At Z of naught, H1 is the bulk of gas by far. A little dwarf can even have more gas than stars. Fractionally, the H2 remains quite low, though in detail, this depends on XCO. Clusters strip gas and major mergers make it dense. And early types have gas, but just a few percents. The metal content follows from the system's weight with little dwarfs at metallicities of eight. Solids, the dustiness tracks metallicity, but with a steep dependence, leaving dwarfs dust free. As an exponential disk, both CO and starlight fall, while H1 at nearly fixed NH just sprawls. A stellar bar can cause a deviation from this scheme since gas inflow can make the center quite extreme. Now, the cold gas in the inner disk, it lies in a thin layer, but at large R with fewer stars, the H1 disk does flare. Increasing radius, it also drops the metal count, which may go down by 0.3 dex before the stars run out. That H2 gas, of course, it's clumped in GMCs. Cold, dense clouds that play the role of stellar nurseries. The speed with which that cold, dense gas supply gets eight, it varies with the mass and star formation rate. So, that's my Lozi ISM collection. Now to you, I ask for questions and corrections. Thanks a lot, Adam. Sure, no problem. I'm very happy to have these records on the, also the slide. Yeah. <laughs> because I need to, to read that again. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs>